Hey coders and welcome to episode 1 of our Dart Season playlist on the Flutter course. In this episode we're going to be learning about variables and data types within Dart. Now if you have programmed before or have experience with building scripts, you can probably just spend a couple seconds on this slide before moving on to the coding demonstration. But if Dart is your first ever programming experience, then I would definitely recommend to pause the video at times and replay uh, certain sections because variables are a crucial part of any programming language, not just Dart alone. So variables are basically spots within memory, in your computer's memory, where you can store information and data. And all variables must be declared before they are used. So I have, uh, I have made an example of variable declaration. Let's say you're writing code and you want to define a variable. This is how you would do it. You would first specify the data type of that variable. So I'm going to get into that in a second. There's a lot of different data types that you can specify, but after you specified that, then you're going to need to give your variable a name. And this name is also known as an identifier. After that, you'll set that identifier equal to whatever value that you're trying to store. So again, if you have specified the data type as a string, then your value has to be of type string. So let's look into more of the data types that you can use within Dart. Now, data types are pretty prevalent across programming languages, but there are some differences. So let's look at what is used in Dart. In Dart, you can use a num or a number, an int or an integer, a double, which is basically like a decimal number, uh, a string, a boolean, a list, a map, a special type of data type known as dynamic, and then you have your just plain var data type. Now, if you create custom objects, which inevitably you will, you must also de declare the type of that object when you are trying to de uh, define a variable of that type. All right, next is the identifier. So you can name your identifier anything that has alphanumeric characters. However, you can't include any spaces or special characters besides the underscore and the dollar sign. And additionally, you cannot begin your identifier with a number. Other than that, though, you can basically make whatever uh, identifier you want. You can spell whatever word you want, or it doesn't even have to be a word for that matter. All right, and then finally is your value. Your value, again, can be anything. It's whatever data you, that you're trying to store. As long as the data type matches, or the data type of the value matches the data type that you have declared at the beginning of your declaration. So again, for this example, we have uh, defined a data type string as our name, right? And so the value that we're storing is David, those characters David, um, and, and it's surrounded by quotes. That's how you basically declare a string is you surround your characters in quotes. All right, let's jump on and over to the code editor now to get an example of all of the different types of data types. I've gone in and made a couple changes to our script, but as you can see, we still have our main method, which is where our Dart program begins. And then that is preceded by the keyword void, which basically tells Dart, hey, we're not going to be returning anything in this method. Uh, void basically means nothing, right? So Dart is going to look at this main method first. It's going to start executing right at this curly bracket. And it's going to move on to line two. That's blank. So it's going to move on to line three. And this is what I want to mention first. This is how to declare comments within Dart. Dart comments are always preceded by two forward slashes. And the way to comment uh, easily without actually typing in the forward slashes is just to highlight the line or lines of code that you want to comment. And then on a Mac, hit command forward slash. And on a Windows, do control forward slash. To uncomment, you basically do the same thing. So if you want to uh, just comment, just do that. All right, so. Dart is going to see now that this is a comment, so it's going to move on to the next line of code. And here we go. This is our first line of code that's going to be executed by our program. So let's say that we have some data, such as this right here, this name, David, that we want to store within memory. Well, to declare a variable, we first specify the data type, which is, this is going to be a string, right? Anything that is surrounded by quotes within Dart is, is a string, or quotes within basically any programming language is a string. So we're going to say string, and then we're going to give that variable an identifier. I'm going to call this variable name. So I'll type in name, and then equals to David. And then finally, the semicolon at the end. 
Now that we have this data stored in this variable, we can use this variable wherever we want within the, uh, within the script, right? So we can print that out by saying print name, or if we wanted to reference that variable within a string, this is how we would do that. So we would say, hi, my name is, and then say the variable name preceded by a dollar sign. Now this is specific to Dart. Other programming languages do it differently. Some of them do at least. Um, but if you wanted to, again, reference your variable within a string, then you're going to have to precede it with a dollar sign. And you'll see why if I remove that, then Dart would just just uh, reference this or just interpret this as hi, my name is na as name, all one string. And that's not what we want. We want Dart to actually know that when we say name, we're talking about our variable, our, our identifier. So just precede that identifier with a dollar sign. Now, if we run it, then it should say David, and then hi, my name is David. Now, again, just like any programming languages, you can change the variable whenever you want within the uh, within the script itself. So if we changed it right after we defined it um, to say, hi, my name is, or, or the, the name, the identifier now, or the variable is now Mike, then we could do that just like this. We wouldn't have to say string again because that's kind of redundant. We're already telling, um, in fact, that's not even allowed to do uh, because we're already telling Dart, hey, the variable name is a string. So all that we need to do is just type that in again and say Mike. Again, we can't change this. If this is a string, then it has to stay a string. We can't change it to a, a different data type such as six, you know, the number six, um, it has to stay a string. So let me just run that real quick just to see that it is indeed working. And there we go, it says Mike, and then hi, my name is Mike. All right, let's keep moving on to make sure that this video isn't too long. All right, so I'm going to uncomment all of this now. So here are some different data types that we can also use within Dart. So let's start with int. So int stands for integer. Basically, integers are any whole number. So they can be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, um, or they can also be negative numbers, right? So if we want to declare this variable pets my neighbor owns, we could say, you know, 5. We could say negative numbers. Again, that's totally fine. But we can't say something like 5.5. 5.5 is a decimal number or a fractional number, and that is not allowed within the integer data type, right? It already is throwing us an error because, again, Dart is a static language. It checks types before it even compiles. All right, so uh, if we did want to have a decimal number, though, we would need to declare our, our variable as a double. A double is basically a floating point number, uh, which is like a decimal number. Now, again, these can also be uh, negative numbers, that's totally fine. Um, but they're always like, they're always a decimal number. Now you could say like distance equals 23.0, that's totally fine. Um, but again, doubles are used for when you want to have uh, decimal numbers. Now let's say that you didn't know whether your number was going to be an integer or a double, or possibly it could change um, within the life of the script. Then you would just declare it as a num. So num could be an integer just like this, years old equals 17, or you could say that years old is 17.5. Both of those do not throw an error uh, because a num can be either an integer or a double. All right, so let's keep moving on. So string, uh, we already looked at that. Oh yeah, another thing is that all of these data types are keywords and they're all case sensitive. So you couldn't say string with a lowercase s role equals this. That's going to throw an error. That doesn't work. You're going to need to make sure all of them are case sensitive and capitalized where they need to be. So a Boolean, which can either be true or false, is, is, uh, is specified by B-O-O-L, all lowercase. All right, the next two are lists and maps. So with Dart, it's important to specify the data type within the list or map. You technically don't need to. I could uh, delete that and it would totally be fine, but it's good Dart practice at least to specify the data type within that collection, right, within that list. So again, you can see I have a collection of three different strings or a list of three different strings. So I have uh, specified that indeed my student's variable is a list of strings. And that helps me um, if I you know, append to the list uh, it will throw an error saying, hey, you already specified this as a list of strings. So why is this integer in that list? 
So that's a good way to make sure that I don't make any mistakes. All right, and the next thing is a map. Again, basically a map is like a dictionary. It, it stores key value pairs. So I'm going to be mapping a string to a double, and that's exactly what I'm doing here. This David right here is a string, and it's mapping to a double so that we can see the GPAs of different students right here. All right, so the next data type is a dynamic, and this is special, or this is specific uh, to the Dart programming language. Basically, a dynamic is, I, I don't really care what data type it is, or I'm not going to specify what data type it is, and also, it can change. So this is actually kind of a unique thing to Dart because uh, if, if we didn't have this data type right here, Dart would be a strongly typed language, which means that we can't change uh, variables once that are, or we can't change variable data types, but we technically can if we use this keyword dynamic. And you can see that right here. I'm going to declare this variable color as a dynamic data type, and we're gonna first start by declaring as a string, right? As you can see, it's surrounded by quotes, but then later within the script, we're going to change that to an integer to 7183. And as you can see, Dart is not complaining. There's no errors because we de de defined it as a dynamic uh, data type. And again, dynamic, you can change your variable uh, uh, from, uh, from one data type to a different data type. Now, the other type of, uh, of, of keyword is var, right? So var is kind of like dynamic in that you're not really specifying a data type right off the bat, but you are letting Dart infer the data type. So you're not really saying, um, you're not saying string color two equals blue, you're saying var color two. You're basically saying, Dart, I don't wanna declare the data type, I'm gonna let you figure it out, but make sure that whatever you figure out doesn't get changed, right? So if I say var color two equals blue, then I cannot change this string into an integer later in the life of the script, right? Because it's already, uh, because, uh, because Dart inferred it as a string and put it in this string category, we can't change it to an integer. All right, so let me just run this just once. And as you can see, we can print out all of these variables that is totally fine to the console. And there they are right there. All right, let me just comment all this out. Before I end this video, I want to share one more thing, and that is the con or that is the keyword const. So let's say that you had a variable that you didn't want to change throughout the life of the program, right? You wanted to make sure that it didn't get changed at all, and if it accidentally did, you would want the program to error out and tell you uh, ahead of time, right? So the way to do that is to, to write this keyword in front of the variable declaration const, and const of course stands for constant. So let's say that you wanted to store uh, the, the, um, the value of pi, say this variable name pi as 3.14, and you knew that that was never gonna change throughout the life of your program. Then you would, you would declare that as a constant. And that way, if it ever accidentally got changed, then it would throw an error so that you would know that that is not supposed to happen Right, and then you could correct the bug, say, in the program. Now you could still use that variable to do operations on it, such as like two times pi, that's totally fine, but again, you can't change the actual value of that variable because it is uh, defined as a constant. All right, that's all that we're gonna look into variables and data types for now. I really wanna keep on moving so that we can get to the good uh, juicy stuff, which is Flutter. So I hope you learned something in this lesson. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button, and I'll see you in the very next episode.